Hey guys, this is a video in my MATLAB tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of using a for loop in MATLAB. I'll go over the general structure of using a for loop and use some examples to help with understanding how to use for loops. In future videos, we'll look at for loops in greater detail. Without further ado, let's get to it. I think a good starting point would probably be to start by talking about when for loops are useful. A for loop is useful if you're trying to repeat a certain set of codes multiple times. Or in other words, you need to run through multiple iterations using a certain block of code. With for loops, you need to know ahead of time how many iterations you need to run using the for loop. This will probably be cleared up as we delve into some examples. The basic structure of the for loop is as follows. We have four, then we have the index, which is a vector, and then we have the statements, which is the code, and then we have end to close off the for loop. The indices in MATLAB start at one, and all indices must be positive integers. The statement, as, as uh, I kind of talked about earlier, is the code that is going to be repeated uh, for, as the for loop goes through multiple iterations. You must make sure that you have the word end to close off the for loop. Otherwise, MATLAB will give you an error. Let's look at a very simple example. I'm going to create a vector that I'll call values. Then that goes from 0 to 10. Values equals 0, colon, 10. When I don't specify an increment using the colon operator, the default increment is one. If you need a refresher on how to create arrays or vectors using lint space or the colon operator or how to find the nth element of a vector, you can check out my YouTube video on that topic that I, that I will link in the description below. You can also look through my MATLAB tutorial series. So back to the code. The values is the assigned name to the vector that goes from zero to 10 with an increment of one. So we can just look at that really quickly in, uh, in the command window, see if we have zero to 10, that creates an array that, or a vector that goes from zero to 10 with an increment of one. Okay, so now I'm going to create a for loop that takes the ith element and multiplies that element by two. Now this is a trivial use of the for loop. I could easily create a new vector that just multiplies each element and the values array by two. So this is just for demonstration purposes. I, that's what I'm calling the index, goes from, uh, goes from one, since MATLAB indices start at one and it needs to go until 11 since there are 11 elements in this values array. And then the statement or the code that I actually want to run, I want to take, uh, I'll call the output just um, output one, and that's equal to uh, values i times two, and then end. In this case, i is the name I'm assigning, assigning to the loop index. And as mentioned, it's, it's a uh, vector that goes from 1 to 11. Once again, since I'm using the colon operator, the increment by default is 1. The ending value for the index is 11, since there are 11 elements in the values vector. And here, output 1 is equal to values of i times 2. So what it's doing is the code is taking the ith element and multiplying that by two. So when it goes through the first iteration, i will equal one. So values of i, that means the first element in the values array, which is zero, and that will be multiplied by two. Before we run this, let's make sure we save the script. So save as, I'll save this as four, uh, four underscore loop. Uh, video 
And let's run this. And the hotkey for running a MATLAB script is Control Enter. So when I press Control Enter, I didn't suppress this because I wanted to see, make sure that we can see it in the command window. So what we have going on is the values array is the values vector goes from zero to 10 with an increment of one. And for each iteration, we have an out, a value for output one. So when it goes through the first iteration, values of i is zero, zero times two, that's zero. And for the second one, uh, the, the second element in the values vector is one, and one times two is two, and so on. It does that until it goes to the 11th element, which is 10. You can also see how many elements there are in the values uh, values uh, vector here. It's a 1 by 11 uh, vector. As you can see in the workspace, MATLAB only stores the output value from the last iteration. If you want to see values from all other iterations, one way to do that is by pre-allocation, which we'll look into in a future video. But I uh, left out the semicolon, so uh, in the command window, I can see uh, the output from each iteration. Now, let's change this code up a little bit. Let's say that I'm going to change the index vector. Let's say that I only want to take every other element in the values array and multiply it by 2. In other words, I'll type in i equals 1 colon 2 colon 11. Let's see what this vector looks like in the command window. Let's clear everything out from the workspace and CLC at the command window. Let's just make sure we know what the index uh, array looks like. So as you can see, it's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So it's going up uh, by two, and it's starting at one. So effectively, we have all the odd indices here. So let's go ahead and run the script. Let's make sure, let's just clear this off. So now when we run it, values is still that same array that goes from uh, 0 to 10. But uh, the first element is 0, and 0 times 2 is still 0. But notice the next element here, the next output 1 value is 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So it's skipping 1 and going, uh, or going to 2. And that's because I told it in the uh, index vector to skip uh, the uh, skip a one element in between because we're going up by uh, two. And this is going uh, by the odd indices. So it's going for the first, third, fifth, and so on. Let's say that instead of wanting the odd locations, you wanted the even locations. You could start it at the first even location, which is two and then go up by uh, two until we go to the last uh, element. Now, I don't need to change this 11 to a 10, and I'll just show you why. So let's, let's clear CLC. So when I go from two with an increment of two to 11, notice that I get two, four, six, eight, and 10. As you can see, the vector stops at 10. MATLAB starts the vector at 2, then goes up by an increment of 2. Once it goes to 10, it cannot add 2 and still come up with an element uh, that is less than the ending value of 11 that, uh, that is specified. So it stops at 10. Alternatively, if I did 2 colon 2 colon 10, I would still get the same thing. Uh, you can always check in the command window to make sure you know what your vector looks like. So in this case, I'll leave it as 2, uh, colon 2, colon 11. And when I run this, when I run this, this time, I'll get a 
a two as the first output one value and then six. So this corresponds to one times two, three times two, and so on. I want to also point out that you could uh, create an index array beforehand and just assign it to what you decide to call uh, the index. So in this case, I, I could alternatively have done, uh, in, call it something else, index loop, and just assigned it to be this vector, and then just said I is equal to index loop. And when I do that, I'll get the exact same thing, two, six, and so on. Before we move on to another example, I want to point out that non-integer values don't work as indices in a for loop. For example, let's say I want to do a 0 0.2, uh, and then 0 0.2 is the increment, and then 1.1 here. When I run this, let, let me just put the clear and see, I'll see here. When I run this, I'll get an error that array indices must be positive integers or logical values. So make sure that when you have uh, an, a, a vector for the index, it's consisting of positive integers and their, your first uh, integer value start, uh, is, is not zero, it starts at one. So that was a very rudimentary introduction to the structure and usefulness of the for loop. Let's do something that is one step up from the first example, but nothing drastically difficult. Let's change the index vector back to 1, 11. So I'll just kind of take this out. I don't really need to see that that way. 1 to 11. And what we'll do this time, I'm going to have a value that updates for each iteration of the for loop. I'll call this k. So k is going to equal one before the for loop starts its iteration. And then the, uh, the uh, output one is going to be values of i times two plus k. And then k is going to update at the end of the for loops, k is going to update by 10. So I'm going to add, add 10 each after each iteration. So let's run this and see what we get. And let's talk about that. So k before the for loop starts iterating is equal to 1. So when uh, the for loop iterates for the first time, we have values of i. So the first element of the values array is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Now, at the end of this for loop, k updates. So it goes from a 1 to 1 plus 10, which is 11. And then afterwards, the for loop goes through the second iteration. And this time, it's values of i times 2. So it's 1 times 2 plus 11, which is 13. And it will do that for all other uh, iterations until it goes to the last one. Let's do a very basic example of plotting using the for loop. In future videos, we'll look at more complex examples. I'm going to write a script that goes as follows. x equals lin space. 0 comma 2 times pi 1000. What this does is it's creating a linearly spaced vector that goes from 0 to 2 pi with, uh, with 1000 elements. And then I'll say y equals si uh, sine of x. And we'll say figure hold on plot x comma y for i equals 1 to 3, y equals sine 
the, of the x plus i. And I don't really need to see the values for this, so I can suppress that with a semicolon. And then I need to plot this x comma y and then end. So what this is doing, it's, uh, it's taking the values from the, uh, the array x and creating an array y and I'm plotting uh, x, for, uh, x comma y and here the figure is being instructed to hold on to all the plots and then all of the plots that will be generated using the for loop will be plotted in the same figure window since there are no other uh, figure commands to tell MATLAB to generate a new figure window. And this uh, for loop, the plus i is just shifting uh, the original uh, sine of x uh, function, the parent function, up by i units each time. So for the first iteration, it will be shifting it up by one unit. And for the second iteration, the index will equal two, so it will be shifted up by two units. And for the third, third iteration, it will be shifted up by three units. So let's run this. And sure enough, we have the blue uh, graph, which is the parent function. That's uh, this one right here. And then for uh, the for of uh, well, when the for loop is running, we have uh, the sine graph shifted up by one for the first iteration, two by the uh, two for the second iteration, and three for the uh, third iteration. I want to show what would have happened if I had put the figure and hold on inside the for loop. Let's try that. So let's take this out of here and let's put that inside the for loop and let's run this. So as you can see, I have four separate figures. So what's happening is, in order to plot this the first time, a figure window is created. And each time the for loop is iterating, it's being told to generate a new figure window. And it's not holding on to uh, plots from the previous iterations in, in the same figure window. It's only holding on to uh, plots during that iteration. So if I had done x line 2, which is just generating a um, vertical line, that would be held on to uh, 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 as the same figure as um, the plot of x comma y for that iteration. So let's run this. So as you can see, for the third iteration, we have um, the shifted up sine graph and the vertical line. Similarly, for uh, iteration two, we have uh, the shifted sine graph plus the uh, vertical line. Same thing for uh, the first iteration. And then uh, this is just the original function of sine. So if you want to plot, or if you want to hold on to all of the plots uh, from the various iterations in one figure, you want to put the figure command outside the for loop like this. Oh, we can probably also get rid of this x line too. So let's try that again. There, there we go. If you need a refresher on plotting, please feel free to refer to my video on how to plot in MATLAB that will also be linked in the description below. That's it for this video. I hope this uh, helps in some way and gives you guys a decent starting point for understanding why and how a for loop is used. In future videos, we'll look at more complex examples. We'll look at pre-allocations in for loops, uh, how to plot in a for loop when the constants in an equation are changing for the various iterations, such as um, uh, equations with gear ratios. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the MATLAB tutorial series, as well as the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. Also check out the math videos on my channel. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care guys.